G'day guys, back with the Outer Circle, and today, in this episode of Getting Started in Horus Heresy, a quick little guide to units I would try and avoid. So, what is the idea behind this video? Well, I get a lot of messages from people, a lot of emails, a lot of private messages, and they're asking similar questions. Hey, what do you think about this in my list, or this, or... Well, today I want to try and put a few of those questions to bed where people can just watch this episode and say, oh yeah, these are things I probably shouldn't take unless I've got a particularly good reason to do so. Uh, also, keep in mind, like I'm going to be talking about this from what is viable. Viable means sort of semi-competitive, makes sense to take in your army. That doesn't mean you should never take these things. If you want to, you think it's the coolest shit, just do it. You don't need my approval for that. Um... You don't need it to perform in a certain way. You just want the unit. Well, go for it. I don't need to say, oh, yeah, well, it, I agree with you 110%. Do it. No, no, no. If you want to do something, if you think it would look cool or it's a thing you've got in mind, well, nobody needs to vet your ideas. Go for it. All right. So, all that preamble aside, let's look at some units. So, here right now we have the... Legion is a studies box ticked on the 412 web store. And also, I've got the Mechanicum one ticked. So, we're going to go through both these. Obviously, not every unit is going to be displayed, but I'll quickly point out the ones to avoid. Uh, straight off the bat, Predator Tanks. Not a huge fan of Predator Tanks, because even though you can get them for about 90 points with just an auto cannon turret, it's not great value, considering that only a very brief step up from that in points, once you start putting on the appropriate weapons, you get Sikarans, and Sikaran tanks are faster, much, much better armoured, uh, more survivable, because of the fact that they're better armoured, and they can more quickly respond to threats. They can also pack a greater volume of firepower, and the firepower they have is just outright better. Uh, even a stock Sikaran tank with the twin accelerator auto cannons is going to perform much better than the Predator auto cannon, being both twin linked, having extra shots, and forcing people to reroll successful jinx saves. It's just flat out superior. And yes, most you do pay more points for it, you'll find that the difference between the two is not appreciable enough to make Predators a super viable option. Now, of course, caveats to that if you're taking something like an armored breakthrough right of war. Okay, sure. Maybe Predator Tanks are the one for you. But overall, they're very underwhelming, uh, and they're pricey models. Uh, the big thing with a lot of the ones we're going to talk about today is maybe don't piss away your money. Buy things that you're going to get a lot of value out of. You're going to use in a lot of lists as opposed to something that's a bit gimmicky and you're only going to use occasionally. And the Predator really does fit that. Another one on screen that fits that bill, the Mastodon. This thing is, it has less hull points than fell blades. In fact, it only has three quarters of the hull points. Uh, it does have a lot of armor, but armor 14 is really pretty run of the mill in heresy. And considering things like Spartans have flare shields, so equivalent armor of 15 on the front, or 16 versus uh, ordnance and template, yeah, the Macedon isn't really that survivable. Not only that, things like the Typhon Super Heavy Siege Tank, which is much, much smaller <laughs> than the Mastodon, has the Crushing Weight Special Rule, and in a theoretical ramming competition between the two, the Typhon will come away the victor. It makes no sense. Uh, the Mastodon as a whole as well, firepower-wise, a couple of heavy flamers, two single las cannons, a six-shot anti-air turret, which is strength 7 AP4 off the top of my head, uh, not great, and a very short-ranged Magna Melter type weapon on the front, which fires four small blasts at only 12 inches range. The, it's criminally underarmed. It's not as good as other super heavies at ramming things. It's a death trap. I do not appreciate them or like them at all, and the only way to make a Mastodon work is to upgrade it to Explorer Auguries and put a bunch of Tech Marines inside to heal the shit out of it as it gets wounded. But for 700 points off the top of my head, nearly 800 points, yeah. Don't sink your money into it, guys, especially when, as you can see, it costs so much money. 
the Sikorin Omega. Wow, oh, what a fucking turd. This tank, even with adjustments made by Forge World, is still the worst Space Marine tank. Uh, even over things like Whirlwinds. Because you're getting something which has worse firepower than an Arcus, and costs more, and has none of the versatility, and when it dies, it blows up even bigger. Why would I want that? <laughs> it's just poo, it needs a total rework. Socarp Hat and Stormbird. Too big to practically use in games. Avoid it, guys. Just avoid it. Try and stay away from all these Lords of War, these super heavy transports and tanks, as much as possible. Anything bigger than like a Felshion or a Baneblade chassis is too big. You will not be able to play your games properly with it. And although, yeah, okay, maybe once a year you'll get out a big long table and have a big APOC competition at your local games club and you'll get the Thunderhawk out then, does that justify it? Is it worth spending, in the case of an Australian, $1,000 on a Thunderhawk for that one game a year? Probably not. It's like a Titan, and to be honest, before you can even start using these units in a legal army list, you need to spend a lot of points on other units. You're not just buying two tactical squads and a HQ and then chucking in a Thunderhawk. A Thunderhawk's the better part of 900 points off the top of my head. And that means it's not going to be seeing action below, much below games that are like 4,000 points. Because a Lord of War can't take up more than a quarter of the points in your army. Because, you know, Heresy, unlike certain other editions of Warhammer, has limits. So, yeah, try and avoid those big super heavies. I'm not saying they're terrible units, just it's a bit of a waste of your time, money, and they're just impractical. Out of the super heavies... The Felshian's alright with the twin-linked volcano cannons, but honestly, I wouldn't go for that. First, I'd go for well, probably the Fellblade, followed by the Glaive. I mean, the Glaive's a good all-rounder. That's good on any table. The Fellblade really comes into its own on games that are like 70-inch-plus boards because that thing has 120-inch range guns. But, you know, perfectly viable on most tables. Uh, the Charybdis. I do recommend it as a unit, but if you're new to this hobby or you're new to working with resin, stay away from it. That thing is entirely resin. Also, it's huge. It's the size of a basketball, which means transporting it and going from state to state uh, is quite difficult. So it's really only for someone who is happy to splurge and buy a case just for that one unit. Um, and they're not afraid to sort of experiment, get their hands dirty, really mess around with uh, the resin as a material, I would mostly say avoid the Charybdis. Again, not a terrible unit. In fact, in-game, it's pretty viable, and I would suggest it for multiple lists. But, again, those little caveats. Legion Assault Squads. Yeah, Assault Marines are never in a good place. Uh, they can really work well uh, when they're combined with things like Apothecaries, Day of Revelation, Rite of War, maybe... Cavitation Strike with Raven Guard, maybe? Um, but yeah, overall, Assault Marines, that slightly better movement, uh, as we showed the other day in the comparison between Despoilers, that's Tactical Marines armed with close combat weapons, uh, it's just not really worth it for the Assault Squads. You can buy Tactical Marines for cheaper, arm them with close combat weapons a lot of the time, and they're just as effective. And at least they'll also retain a 24-inch ranged option for when maybe charging in swords first is not the best option. Of course, they have their place. But again, if you want to save a little money, maybe don't go for them. The Xiphon Pattern Interceptor. Again, not completely terrible. Like, if there's another flyer, you will kill it. Plus, model looks... A million bucks. Great to put together. Uh, I have one in my white scars. I've used it in a lot of games. I can't think of a single one that's actually survived. Two hull points and armor 11. It is basically a javelin land speeder that costs 270 points upgraded, I believe. It's, yeah. All right. Yes, it has an armored cockpit. Yes, it has chaff launches, so it gets special saves against missiles and such, but yeah, it's not 
great. When you compare it to the Primaris Lightning Fighter that you know is going to come on and is going to pump whatever it targets, like when it fires those four Kraken Penetrators as a Land Raider, you know you're going to kill the Land Raider. When a Xiphon comes on, it's firing two Laz Cannons and two basically slightly better Crack Missiles. That's not great. Uh, it will do damage, but you're not guaranteed to kill what you're shooting at. And that's huge when, again, your Armor 11 have two hull points. Moving further on down the list. Let's see here. I will look at the Legion Whirlwind here, the Scorpius. And I will just point out the Whirlwind itself. So the non-Scorpius variant. The one that has a strength 5 AP 4 large blast. Those are terrible. They're not the worst tank, but they're pretty terrible. Namely because strength 5 AP 4 is a pretty piss poor weapon in the meta. Uh, if I was to use such a term. Because, well, frankly, everything's power armored or power armor equivalent. Very few things that can be killed by AP 4. Uh, we're talking things like Thalax, uh, Solar Auxilia, but at the same time, whilst it can hurt them, these are taking up your only artillery choice. And if you're taking artillery for not that many more points, you could be taking things like Medusas and Basilisks, which are just so far superior, it's, it's a no-brainer. So, I'm not saying they're the worst, because the Sigur and Omega exists, but they're maybe not the best use of your money. Now, the regular Whirlwind, of course, is great. The Scorpius pattern, that is. That's worth your money. Uh, Outriders, as we spoke about in the bike video, very limited circumstances in which they're the better option over Javelins, so I would say, mm, look at avoiding. Death Storm Drop Pod with Assault Cannons, don't even know why that's in here. Um, don't even know if anyone can legitimately take that as an option. But it's not a great one. Avoid. Recon Marines. They're not in a great place. Uh, too many points for what they offer, basically. And really, Recon Marines are the sort of thing that probably should be units of 10 base. And should probably not be a support troop. They should probably be a, just a legitimate troops choice in exchange for something like tactical squads, because obviously they're going to cost more points if they're squads of 10. I'm guessing the reason they were made squads of 5 and a support choice is so people couldn't take two 5-man cheap squads and then something else, but in any case, not in a great place. So, I would say avoid Legion Recon squads, even in something like Raven Guard or Elf Legion, because frankly their Legion traits give those Legions, despite the fact you think they would work really well, well, the Legion traits give those Legions abilities anyway, um, like Infiltrate and Scout and... yeah. Graviton Cannons. Graviton Cannons are a great one because it's like, here is a fantastic weapon if you know how to use it. If you don't, you're wasting your points. But fantastic for killing vehicles, highly recommend it for that job. Uh, they do need a points reduction though. I suppose that's not an avoid, but more of a cautious warning. You need to know what you're doing with them. Alright, the Legion Rapier Quad Heavy Bolter. Nobody ever takes these. And I can only think of one Legion that gets any sort of perk out of them. And that would be the Iron Warriors with Shrapnel Bolts. Where three of these together... Uh, Three of them, each firing six shots twin linked, 18 pinning shots. The potential is there for them to be decent. Um, Dark Angels can't take mutagenic acid on them or molecular acid. That's a shame because that would be super potent. Uh, even if I do think it's a crutch weapon, it would still be fucking terrifying and really make these things useful. But otherwise, they don't put out enough firepower um, for the amount of points you spend. You'd probably just better off buying something like a Legion Heavy Support Squad with Heavy Bolters. They'll put out just as much firepower. Yeah, it won't be Twin Linked, but it gives a shit. Um, if you're a Legion like Imperial Fists, for example, they'll get benefits for using Heavy Bolters, whereas these guys won't. So, 
what else? What else have we got? Uh, Legion Tech Marines. Yeah, avoid Tech Marines. They're not very good. Uh, the only times I recommend them are, of course, Master of the Forge, who is great, but it's not a Tech Marine. That's a HQ console upgrade. Uh, and that's when you rock them with Servitors packing Brad Missile Launchers. Because, yeah, uh, it's awesome. And, of course, because Forge Lords are better challenges than Champions 9 times out of 10. Because you've got a guy who can take rad grenades, he's got a servo arm, access to thunder hammers, artificer armor, a uh, whole bunch of good stuff going on with tech marines, uh, cyber familiars, so talking four up involved saves, three up if they're in cataphracty armor, really, really tanky, really tanky. Um, a tech marine of the salamanders, for example, could be in power armor with a Boarding shield, uh, sorry, with a refractor field, cyber familiar, and dragon scale storm shield, and a thunder hammer. He will beat a lot of people in close combat because he's going to have like a three up invol save, and he's going to fight with a lot of strength eight attacks, and you're going to be minus one toughness as well. So even toughness five stuff like Thalax will get instant gibbed. Yeah, brutal. All right, another one on this page Space Marine air defense missile launchers. Hyperios, yeah, those defense turrets are ballistic skill 2, and they're immobile. They are useless. For the points you pay, functionally useless. They have too few shots, and the shots they do have do not have a low enough AP to actually kill the flyers they shoot at. Legion Moritats, whilst not outright broken in any direction, are not really worth taking right now for anyone. Um, Okay, in theory, you can arm them with something like a fusion gun, or, sorry, a fusion pistol in, say, Bond Angels. Um, drop down right next to a tank, potentially kill it turn one. Of course, you're throwing away 100 point to 160 point Moritat. For the sake of it, I mean, it'll want to be worth it. Um, and a lot of the time, the sort of vehicles you want to take out are going to be packing armored ceramite. So, bleh, very limited reward. Vigilated consoles, yeah. Again, you need to be packing the right list to make it worth taking. And very few lists will be. Out of the Space Marine heavy weapons, multi melters are one I've never understood as a heavy weapon. Ever. In the whole game. Infantry multi melters make no sense to me. And if you can move and fire them, it would be a totally different game. But because you can't move and fire them, you're really relying on enemies coming really close to the multi-melters. And the multi-melters cost so many points for the actual damage output of that one shot. And I guess, okay, sub-24 inches, they're going to be handy because they're going to kill things like Terminators. They are scary. But the amount of points you're paying, the risk-reward on the unit... Like, compared to Plasma Cans, Plasma Cans use a sort of a known entity. You know what you're getting out of them. And Laz Cannons are not that much more than Multi Melters and have double the range. So, unless someone comes within that 12 inch Multi Melter, actual Melter range, then they're not really getting their money's worth. So, I can never really say Multi Melters are a great choice. Uh,. Same thing for rotor cannons, and of course nobody's using rotor cannons as rotor cannons. All Blood Angels players using them as assault cannons, um, but rotor cannons are poo, absolute trash. Uh, sure, when upgraded with acid uh, or sorry poisoned ammunition, they become a lot better. They're still not great. Um, frankly, a heavy bolter is a better investment a lot of the time, and if you have access to it, an assault cannon is a much better investment. Uh, and even though the order cannons have only half the shots, at least there's strength 7 and AP4. And whilst AP4 is nothing to really go, wow, it's a lot better than AP nil. So, yeah, I think I know where my head's at for that one. And Dreadnought weapons. Dreadnought weapons, let's just quickly cover off on that. Dreadnoughts generally shouldn't be armed with, say, a single ranged weapon. It's not really great, uh, and I'm talking specifically about Contemptors here, and I do think it does apply somewhat to Leviathans. Because you're crippling your close combat potential, 
uh, by taking the weapon. And if you do lose, um, say, a combat arm, then you've, you've got nothing for close combat. You're now strength 6 Dreadnought. Uh, if you lose the ranged weapon, then you've now lost your ranged capability and you're stuck with just your close combat attacks, which are not as good as they would otherwise be because of the fact you only have one arm. Of course, the argument could always be made that you lost an arm regardless, but still. Uh, two close combat weapons or two ranged weapons are the only choices. And if you're taking two ranged weapons, you need to avoid single shot, single use type weapons. Uh, conversion beamers are generally an avoid for dreadnoughts. Uh, las cannons, two las cannons or two multi melters, also bad choices. Um, I would try and give my Dreadnoughts a uniform armament, such as two sets of Heavy Bolter arms, two sets of Curie's Assault Cannons, two Close Combat arms. Keep it doubled up, and you'll keep a lot of your firepower potential. Keeps the Dreadnoughts dangerous. If you're not doing that, you're really not using the unit correctly, in my humble opinion. I mean, if you're paying better part of what, 170, 180 points for a Contempted Dreadnought whose only armament is two multi-melters, have you used those points wisely? Think of what else you could buy for those points, or the financial dollars. Do, 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 do. Keep them down through the list. Uh, Contemptor Psycho Missile Launcher. No Contemptor Dreadnought has Psycho Missiles in 30k. So I don't know why it's called a Psycho Missile Launcher. Perhaps a Hunter Killer, perhaps a Havoc Launcher, but not a Psycho Missile Launcher. And even then, Dreadnoughts are pretty expensive. Are you really going to invest in Havoc Launchers for all your Contemptors? Maybe. It's not a terrible weapon. I don't say you shouldn't. But, meh, is it worth the money? Leviathan Gravflux Bombard. Hmm. All you need to know about this weapon is it's beautiful at killing infantry. But it's supposed to be an anti-tank weapon. But it's lucky if it can glance a rhino. 50-50 uh, chance of even doing that. So, yeah, odd weapon. And lastly, the Cerberus Heavy Tank Destroyer. Avoid at all costs. It is the worst super heavy tank in the game. Because it has D3 shots. Not D3 plus one or anything like that. D3 shots. Which means potentially less firepower than just a Sigur and Venator. Uh, and in 1 in 3 times you fire it, it'll have less power than the Sicker and Venator. Uh, 1 in 3 times it'll have the same amount of firepower, and the other 1 in 3 times it'll have more. And of course, if it doesn't pen, then it gets a feedback through the neutron laser, which can damage the tank, and all sorts of weird stuff. But basically, for not that many more points, you can get a Typhon, and a Typhon gives 10-inch strength 10 AP2, ignores cover super blasts, which... Uh, a tad broken, we'll say. But anyway, that's some avoids for you. Uh, and let's go on to the Mechanicum now. So, uh, Mechanicum Knight Asterius. Um, avoid? I don't think I know why anyone would really want one. I mean, I think the Pyrophon is just a better knight in general. So there's that. Um... Termites and the Ordinatus, again, you've got to be very specific with what you put in them to really get your money's worth. Because with Mechanicum, you're always fighting a ever-losing battle for points. You just never have enough points to go around. Never got the points for what you need. You've never got enough points to get that extra Castellax in, or to upgrade your Castellax to Flamers, or to get that Domitar into the Force, or the extra Volterax. There's never enough points. And... If it came down to it, okay, sure, I could deliver a squad of Castellax to the enemy with the Ordinatus, or I could take an extra Thanatar. Probably going to get more points worth out of the Thanatar than those Castellax, which will rock up at some point in the game, and alone and unsupported because, well, think of it this way. If you pop up and you drop a squad of Castellax in the middle of the enemy army in turn one or something, somehow... What do you think is going to happen to that squad? Big distraction can't fix. That turn, all the Marine player or the other Mechanicum player, Custodes, whatever, they're just going to turn all their guns inwards and blow that unit away. And between the cost of the Ordinatus and the unit itself, oh boy, is that a lot of points gone. So, yeah. Do I think the Ordinatus is terrible? 
Uh, that's the Acteus, of course, not the Sagittara or whatever. No, not terrible, but like 750, 755 points. That's pricey. That's pricey, and it's only going to deliver three White Castellax or Warax, something like that. Maybe Domitar. Um, it does say Battle Automata. That's a good thousand odd points, and you're not going to be seeing this thing below, what, 3,000 point games, roughly? So you rock up into an enemy army with this thing. Like The only good thing I can see about it is that, yeah, the enemy is probably going to blow it up that turn, because it doesn't matter that it's super heavy, because it's going to get surrounded by fucking Melter Bombs. If they do blow it up that turn, um, it'd probably de-explosion to the enemy army, in which case it's a suicide bomber drill, which is hilarious. So there's that. Uh, Mechanicum, Thanatar, Siege Automatos are a must-take, but avoid the other two variants. Um, there's the Calyx, and there's also another Plasma one, which basically uses this same model, because it doesn't have a model. Um, that thing is woeful. It has like a 24-inch poor man's version of the regular Thanatar gun. Avoid that. Thalax, good. Hoplite's good. Paltus, good. Uh, Ursarax, good if used wisely. Okay, Knights are fine. Okay, the Ordinatus Sagittar and the Ordinatus Ulator. So the Sagittar, there aren't many times when you're like, hmm, I need a Bellicosa Patent Volcano Cannon off a Warlord Titan and can fit it comfortably into my list. There just aren't that many times. And the Ordinatus Ulator is for those occasions when you're like, fuck, I have too many friends in the wargaming community and I need to downsize. Because that thing has bullshit rules. It puts out a very large wave that hits every single thing on the table in the line and it shoots for a ridiculously long distance. Yeah. Nobody likes playing against that thing. Uh, and it's not even one of those fun thematic things where you're like, oh, well, you know, we were playing an apocalypse-sized game and, oh, his Ulator took a shot turn one and, oh. No, it's one of those things where it's like, it fired turn one and it blew away a quarter of my shit and now I'm not really enjoying my game anymore. It's one of those weapons. And yes, that doesn't always happen, but it happens enough where, yeah, I pretty much don't see them in play because a lot of mechanic players are like, yeah, I can't really justify it. <laughs> uh, the knights are all good to varying degrees. Odomitar, uh great if you're fighting Dreadnoughts now. Otherwise, they're an elite's choice, and they're not as good as something like Castlex or Vorax, which you can get in far greater numbers for the points. Uh, Domitar are extremely points uh, heavy. So, I mean, great if you're starting out a mechanic of army and you want to get to high points fast. Buy a squad of those... Uh, they will fill up your points massively because they're like 120 points each, maybe more. 150 points each? Hmm. Not sure off the top of my head, but don't have great shooting, don't have great close combat prowess. I mean, basically, they're just Castellax. But with the new Haywire Flamers that they have, they are just a godsend when you fight against Dreadnoughts. Uh, even Super Heavies will die to those things in a turn. Uh, the Karaknos, terrible. Needs a complete rules rewrite, like many other vehicles. Avoid uh, Thanatar, Calyx. Who wants a unit with a one-shot Laz Cannon, basically? Slightly better than Laz Cannon. Uh, one-shot Laz Cannon that has to walk across the table six inches at a time, can't run, only has four attacks in close combat. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, it's designed to destroy enemy fortifications, but there is no viable way of getting it there. You're looking at a minimum of turn four charges with it against enemy fortifications. And nobody's taking fortifications. Because fortification rules are terrible right now in the Heresy. And the only ones people take are things that are broken. Like void shields and Aquila arrays of some kind that have stupid macro weapons. Yeah. Fortifications are in a shit spot. And this is something to combat something no one takes. It is completely useless. Costs a ton of dollars, costs a ton of points. Avoid. Let's keep going through the list. 
Mermiton Secutors. Well, it's not outright terrible. I can't think of any time where I've ever played Mechanicum and I'm like, I just wish I had some Mermiton Secutors right now. Because most people who are playing Mechanicum have a token squad of something like Vorax or Castellax in their army, or they have a Magos, which just reduces the will to live of enemy units. Um, very rarely will people play out the Secutors, and it's only for fluffy and thematic reasons that they do, in which case... It doesn't matter what their power level is, the people are going to do that regardless. So, uh, they're definitely one, though, I would not really go out if I was buying a Mechanicum Army and start off with. Same with the Silax Guardian Automata Covenant. Those things are terrible. Again, another case of needing a rules rewrite because they're not much cheaper than Thalax, and Thalax are more wounds, better toughness, uh, much better mobility, much better firepower. Yeah. Uh, and if you arm the Thalax with the heavy chain blades, they are so much better in assault than the Silax. It's not funny. So, yeah, Silax, until they get probably a massive points deduction, almost to the point of half of their current cost, they're just not worth taking. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the Mechanicum. Should I do a little bonus now and cover off on some other forces? Well, unfortunately, because the Solar Auxiliary and Imperialist Militia lines have been cut so much, you don't really have that much to pick from from Forge World themselves these days. Um, and most of the models that do have kits, they're all good. They're all viable to some degree. Like, Charonite Ogrens are fine. Um, I suppose... The Aurochs, as much as I love it, uh, let's see, the Aurochs. The Aurochs Armoured Transport. So Solar Auxilia and Militia can both take it. For the Solar Auxilia, they do have access to Dracosans, which are infinitely better, but cost a shitload more points. Um, plus the Solar Auxilia can upgrade to some decent Pintle weapons. So for them, it's not terrible as a vehicle. But for the Militia, it is, because the only units that can take them and actually fit in them are Grenadiers. And the problem with Grenadiers is that the only way to get special weapons is by adding additional models into the unit, going up to unit sizes of 12 and such. Well, that's not great, uh, because the vehicle only transports 10, and not 12, like a Chimera predecessor, which is what this thing should have been, really. It shouldn't have just been a clone of a Rhino, it should have been a like an early version of a Chimera. And because it's not, well, the only units it could transport in the Militia, who it's one of the two factions it's designed for, uh, yeah, they can't utilise the thing. Because <laughs> stupidity on the designer's behalf, I guess. Uh, what do you want me to say? <laughs> um, any other forces I really want to cover off on? Hmm... Well, Legio Custodes kind of speak for themselves. Uh, everything is viable, to some degree. Same with the Sisters of Silence. Um, if you are going to take them, then, yeah, they're fine, I guess. It's <laughs> it's one of those things. Uh, knights, again, all knights are viable, just to different degrees. None of them is so unviable as to necessitate a video. So really, that's it. Uh, if we we're going to cover off on Demons of the Ruin Storm, that's its own kettle of fish. I've sort of delved into it in the past, but they need a they need a lot of work. They were something that was released, and the writers just went, "Eh, good enough." And their excuse for the shoddy writing of them is, "Oh well, you know, they're not designed for competitive play. It's like they don't even need to be designed for competitive play. They're not very good at narrative play." Because when you can deploy just one or two objectives on the board, not even trying to be a douche, and you already restrict the other player to a single spawning location that becomes ground zero for the nuclear fallout that's about to come their way every shooting phase. Yeah, can't say I'm a big fan of it. And of course, Demons of the Ruinstorm players are in a situation where they're like, well, the most viable thing is monstrous creatures, so I'm just going to spam the shit out of those. You start to end up with very samey lists. And of course, certain forces like Zench are way worse than other forces like, say, Corn, because, well, psychic powers are terrible, whereas melee buffs are much better. And yes, whilst I know they don't refer to Zench and Corn in the Demons of the Ruin Storm list, 
we know what they're referring to. Brass collars, come on. Anyway, I'm back with the outer circle. I hope this has been a sort of handy guide to things to avoid. Uh, the next video I'm planning on doing, I actually want to look at the Dark Angels Legion and talk about what I'd like to see done with them and what I think is wrong with them. Because they're they're probably the worst Legion of all right now. They're running up there with the Empress Children. The only thing they've got over the Empress Children really is the molecular acid uh, ammunition. If you took that off them, they'd be completely trash as a Legion. Uh, yeah, they need a good talking about. And knowing that Forge World are working on the book and naturally don't listen to me, uh, <laughs> who better to discuss them, right? Then Mr. Common Sense here, who goes all around the world playing Horace Heresy. Speaking of which, I will be in America at uh, Heresy Camp. I'll be getting there, I think, on the 8th of September this year through to the 16th. So anyone who listens to us and is going to be there, come say hi. I'm actually a pretty nice guy in person sometimes. Make with the outer circle. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.